All signs of a stroke a week before. So, guys, when we talk about uh, stroke, uh, is uh, when you look at the numbers, is uh, it causes a lot of deaths, especially in uh, uh, in people, and especially people above 30 years. Uh, so we have a lot of numbers there affected by the stroke. So it's very important, I thought it's wise, according to the DMs and also the requests, that we talk about stroke. So when we talk about uh, the 12 warning signs of a stroke a week before, it's very important that because that is how we get to prevent any bad outcomes. So by recognizing the early signs, warning signs of a stroke, we, we, uh, it, can, it is very crucial that we, we prevent severe outcomes, that is our target. So, and also some symptoms uh, may occur days or even a week before a stroke, often refers to, referred to as, as transient ischemic attacks, uh, transient ischemic attacks or mini strokes. So here are the 12 warning signs uh, to watch for a week before. Number one is uh, sudden weakness especially we have localized uh, weakness with sudden weakness or numbness in the face uh, legs or arms particularly on the one side of the body so you may have one uh, developing numbness on the leg face or, or the arm so particularly on one side of the body so that is a uh, what we look at sudden confusion we are difficult in understanding where sudden confusion, trouble speaking, or difficulty understanding uh, speech is very important. Vision problems also can crop up, that's number three, where we have blood or double vision, where one developed a double vision at that particular time. So we get to uh, evaluate that. If you have blood or double vision uh, with sudden uh, uh, seeing in one or both eyes, including blood vision, double vision, and also complete vision loss at some point. Also, we have number four, dizziness, or uh, where we have uh, vertigo, we call it vertigo. Sudden, where, when we talk about vertigo, we mean sudden dizziness, loss of balance, and also uh, where we, we, ha we have uh, uh, lack of coordination, so vertigo, crops in, that is dizziness, especially the dizziness, we have vertigo, we, we have sudden dizziness, we have loss of balance or lack of uh, coordination. Number five is about severe headache, where we have an explained headache, the, the one can complain about sudden headache, which is unexplained, and sudden severe headache with no known cause, often described as the worst headache of your life, so that severe headache can be a good sign of this difficulty in walking number six with impaired mobility we have sudden trouble walking uh, where one uh, is uh, stumbling or loss of uh, balance also number seven is trouble uh, in uh, uh, swallowing where we what we call dysphagia where sudden difficult swallowing or feeling like something is stuck in your throat can be an early sign of a stroke also numbness or tingling where we have localized sensations, sudden numbness or tingling, particularly on the one side of the body, it can be also a good sign for the stroke. Number nine is about sudden fatigue, where we have extreme tiredness, which is very unusual, and unexplained fatigue or exhaustion. So sudden fatigue is also, especially when we have extreme tiredness, which is unexplained, where you've not done a lot of activities, but we're experiencing a lot of fatigue and exhaustion, that is a warning sign for a stroke. F uh, facial drooping, uh, facial drooping, one side drooping, so sudden drooping also numbness on one side of the face, often noticeable when smiling, so that can also be a very good uh, sign for this, uh, uh, this uh, stroke. Also number 11, is about sudden nausea and vomiting 
certain notion of vomiting so where we have an unexplained uh, digestive issues so sudden nausea vomiting or hiccups without an obvious cause this can have good, be a good sign of uh, the stroke developing also confusion and also memory, memory, memory loss confusion and memory loss where we have cognitive impairment with sudden uh, difficulty in remembering uh, things or confusion about time date or a place where now someone suddenly starts to develop confusion about time if we ask you the person the time especially if it is at night if they tell you it is during the day or they will give you the wrong timing also they can give you wrong date and also a place they cannot be oriented well with their place <clears throat> so immediate action which should be taken when these things are uh, or, or, or these 12 things are observed is immediate action which should be taken if you or someone else experiences these symptoms seek medical attention imme immediately because early intervention can significantly improve the outcomes the acronym FAST can help remember the key signs of a stroke so we have a key acronym FAST F-A-S-T so F stands for face where we check for fa facial drooping Number 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 the A in the face in the in the in the in the first uh, the we we A stands for arms where we check if arms drift uh, down downward when raised speech uh, like for the arms we check if you when you pull the the arms up if they are dropping on their own uh, one hand is dropping on their own so we check on the arms. So speech, listen of slurred or strange speech, so very important, and also time. Time is critical where we call emergency services immediately, even symptoms are of these symptoms are 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 present. For the preventive measures, we do we we check the regular checkups for blood pressure, especially cholesterol and diabetes, health lifestyle, maintain balanced diet, regular exercise, and avoid smoking. And excessive alcohol consumption on medication we check prescribed medica medication to, to manage the risks involved like hypertension and arterial fibrillation so recognizing these early warning signs and acting quickly can save the life and also reduce the severity of the stroke so how do we manage these uh, uh, especially these signs and symptoms number one managing stroke involves both uh, acute treatment to minimize brain damage because stroke, stroke most of the time have affected the brain and it can relate to a lot of problems on the brain so uh, during the event and long-term strategies can prevent future strokes here are the overview of stroke management number one acute treatment or immediate treatment immediate response which is very important recognizing and response is number one where we need to act fast by recognizing the symptoms like uh, face drooping arm um, weakness, speech difficult, time to call emergency services. So act fast, like I said, fast is very important. Call emergency services uh, available immediately recognizing the stroke symptoms to improve uh, for prompt uh, uh, medical interventions. On That is uh, in home setting. So act fast. By, if you recognize uh, face dropping, arm um, weakness, difficulty in, uh, difficulty in uh, speech, and also time to call emergencies now very key. So uh, on hospital care, uh, we emergency room care. Patients are admitted to the emergency room for immediate assessment. Now diagnostic tests like CT scan or MRI to determine the location and also the type of the stroke, which is which is there, is very important. Also, uh, thrombol uh, thrombolytic therapy is very vital, where if we eligible within the time window, tissue uh, plasmonogen activator, what we call TPA, and also may be administered to resolve the clot where causing the stroke. Endovascular therapy, where mechanical thrombo thrombectomy may be performed to remove the clot in the case of large vessel occlusion uh, strokes. Number three is about monitoring and support. Vital signs monitoring is very important because continuous monitoring of the vital signs, oxygen levels, and also neurological issues, 
the neurological status is very important. Supportive care where we maintain adequate blood flow, oxygenation and hydration is very important according to the evaluation of the healthcare worker. Post-acute care for under rehabilitation. So sometimes after the stroke has occurred, we must have post-acute care and also rehabilitation where stroke unit care is very important. Specialized stroke units provide intensive monitoring and also rehabilitation services. Multidisciplinary team, including the neurolog neuro neurologists, we have rehabilitation specialists like also physiotherapists and all occupational therapists coming in, nurses and therapists also, especially the speech therapists also coming in because after stroke, uh, speech also can be affected at that particular point. On, on, uh, on rehabilitation, we, we do, uh, uh, I've talked about phys phys physical therapy uh, to help regain the coordination and also mobility, physiotherapy, occupational therapy focuses on the daily activity and fine motor skills because th these skills can be lost with the stroke. Speech therapy assisting the, the communication and swallowing difficulties. On medications, we have anti um, antiplatelet and anticoagulant therapy to prevent clots and uh, reduce the risk of recurrent of the stroke. Blood pressure management, control hypertension to lower the stroke risk. Cholesterol lowering medication, manage cholesterol levels to reduce arterial uh, plaque builder. Also lifestyle modification where we have a healthy diet coming in. We emphasize on taking off fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins and limit saturated fats and also sodium. Also, physical activity is introduced where regular exercise tailored to individual capability is very important. Smoking cessation, where one is advised to quit smoking to reduce uh, stroke risk because smoking predisposes you to stroke risk. It's very important that you get that. Moderate alcohol consumption, where one is advised to limit alcohol intake to reduce cardiovascular risk, uh, risks. On secondary prevention, management of risk factors is very important where we control hypertension, diabetes, and arterial fibrillation. So screening and treatment also is very important. Regular medical checkups to monitor and manage health conditions that can, can contribute to the stroke risk. Psychological support is very important. Counseling and group uh, uh, gr uh, support groups providing emotional support and also coping strategies to stroke survivors and caregivers is very important. Community resources where we access resources of ongoing support and rehabilitation uh, services is very key. On long-term management for the stroke, follow-up care is very important. Follow-up uh, is very important as a patient or as a caretaker or uh, when you have such a person in the family to always adhere to follow-up appointments with the healthcare provider to monitor the progress and also adjust to the treatment as per needed. Education and awareness, very important. Educate patients and caregivers about stroke symptoms so that uh, they can uh, know the risk factors and also employ the preventive measures. Advanced directives, discuss, the docu uh, discuss and document preferences for future medical care is very important to always study these things and always learn on how to go about them. Stroke management requires comprehensive and multidisciplinary multi uh, approach to minimize disability and prevent recurrence at the end of the day. So early, early, early detection or early interventions, rehabilitation and ongoing support and essential components of effective stroke uh, care. Unfortunately, we have complications which come up with the development of the stroke, where complications arising from stroke can vary widely depending on the severity of the stroke, the area of the brain affected, and also the times of medical interventions. The common complication that stroke survivors may experience is one number one. We have immediate ones. We have long-term complications. Also, we have medical complications. So they are classified psychological and also uh, complications which can come up. So I'm going to start with the immediate complications. We have uh, paralysis or weakness. This is often one side of the body, what we call hemiparesis, and it can be mild, severe, depending on the extent of the brain damage. Stroke affects the brain, so we may have paralysis or weakness depending on the part of the brain affected. Speech and language problems where we have aphasia, aphasia, aphasia is the lack of speech or loss of speech where now uh, a 
aphasia may occur affecting the ability to speak and understand, read and write. So the patients who are affected by the stroke can sometimes can have difficulty in writing and reading and also uh, understanding also on speaking. Cognitive issues can come in where difficulty with memory, where patients may have problems with remembering days, time and place may or may, may, may take place. So and also on reasoning and judgment, a problem solving skills, cognitive, what we call cognitive visits can pop in. Swallowing difficulties, what we call dysphagia, can lead to choking or aspiration pneumonia because uh, the patients have difficulty in swallowing. So very, 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 very important, especially when we, talk, we take care of these patients, especially nurses in the hospital and feeding these patients, we should be careful to, uh, because these patients are affected with the swallowing problems, they may die actually not on now of, of stroke, but what you call aspiration pneumonia, where now you, instead of the patient feeding to the stomach or the, the, GM, the GI system, the patient may, be, uh, may have the food lodging into the lungs and that, that will be the end of them. Emotional changes, mood swings, depression, anxiety, or emotional li 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 liability, what you call in involuntary uh, emotional outbursts, outbursts, this can also crop in. On long-term complications, we have functional impairments where we persistent motor deficits such as difficulty in walking, gait disturbances or performing daily activities independently. Spasticity is also another one where muscle stiffness and involuntary muscle spasms which can affect movement and posture. Pain, chronic pain is always there where now we have long-term issues with the chronic pain often affected the limbs or due to muscle imbalance. Also cognitive impairment where we have long-term issues with memory, attention and also ex executive functions. F fatigue can also crop in. Uh, so fatigue can crop in guys. Persistent fatigue. So when we talk of fatigue, we are talking about uh, fatigue can crop in also where we may have uh, reduced stamina affecting daily activities. Blood and bowel functions where incontinence or difficulty with urination and bowel movements crops in at the long term. Seizures, uh, some individuals may develop seizures uh, after stroke, especially if they are underlying uh, brain damage. Sleep disorders, insomnia or, apnea, or sleep apnea may occur, impacting the overall health and also recovery. Medical complica complications, we have things like deep, deep vein thrombosis. And I have, I have ever done uh, a video on deep vein thrombosis, can you, can you occur, and also pulmonary embolism, where blood clots develop in the legs, and also that, may may, that can travel to the lungs, causing pulmonary embolism. Also, pressure ulcers, where bed sores to immobility, due to immobility, bed sores can ulcers, pressure ulcers can come up because of reduced sensation and also mobility. Infections such as pneumonia, urinary tract infections because of uh, uh, pneumonia because of uh, long term uh, being on bed without moving and also we have UTIs because these patients are, are on indwelling catheters they can predispose them to urinary tract infections so these are the things which, especially because these patients are admitted for a long time, these are very important things for caretakers and also the nurses and also the, the healthcare providers to monitor the patients for pneumonia and also UTIs. Skin infections because due to impaired mobility and immune function. Cardiovascular issues increase the risk for a heart attack and a recurrent stroke. So medication side effects, adverse effects for medication for stroke treatment and prevention can also come in. Psychological and lifestyle adjustments can be also a complication where social isolation is very key because difficulty in, in participating in social activities due to physical or cognitive limitations, this kind of patients develop. Also financial strain. These patients of the stroke, especially in the, in the hospitals, they are very expensive to maintain. They are on a very high um, very costly treatment and also they, they have long uh, stay in the hospitals. This can strain really these kind of people because as much as they are treated also, we have rehabilitation care for them and potential loss of income is also uh, crops in. 
caregiver burden so emotional physical and financial challenge for caregivers supporting stroke survivors is also another thing on prevention and management rehabilitation intensive physical occupational speech therapy to maximize recovery and function also medication management continue use of the medication and also prevent stroke complication lifestyle modifications where we involve health diet smoking cessation and management so with this kind of management of the complications we get to manage the stroke in the best way possible how can we prevent uh, stroke preventing stroke involves managing risk factors and making lifestyle changes to promote overall cardiovascular health here are the key strategies strategies to prevent uh, the stroke number one manage blood pressure blood pressure is the number one cause for this stroke so monitor regularly your blood pressure keep track of your blood pressure and consult with the healthcare provider to manage hypertension effectively healthy diet is very important where you reduce sodium intake and eat potassium rich foods like vegetables and also fruits so that uh, you follow up uh, diet, dash diet, we talked about dash diet in our previous video to lower blood pressure. So control cholesterol levels, very important, eat hearty, heart, uh, eat heart health foods. And when you talk about heart health foods, we include rich in fiber, omega-3 uh, fatty, fatty acids, things like fish, nuts and uh, seeds. We talk about uh, uh, seafoods here of omega which contain omega-3 and also see uh, we're talking about brazilian seed nuts they're very high in these omega-3 uh, fat acids i did this this uh, about uh, these uh, omega-3 fat acids in the previous video and you can check on it medication if prescribed uh, cholesterol lowering medications uh, directed by your healthcare provider to lower these uh, cholesterol levels also manage diabetes because minor blood uh, sugar monitor blood your blood sugar levels to keep your blood sugar level within healthy range through the diet and exercise and medications as uh, prescribed so regular checkups also very important uh, because we have other factors associated with diabetes such as high blood pressure and high cholesterol which can really bring a lot of problems also as a preventive measure quit smoking if you are a smoker quit smoking if you are currently smoking I also seek support by enrolling in a, a smoking cessation programs or seek support from your healthcare professionals to stop uh, this uh, smoking because it can lead you to stroke. Limit alcohol consumption. If you drink alcohol, do, it, do so in moderation. Limit alcohol consumption. Can reduce, by limiting the alcohol consumption, it can reduce the risk, risk of uh, stroke. By maintaining also healthy weight, so maintain healthy weight through balanced diet, eat nutritious diet, which uh, manage with manage portion sizes to achieve and maintain healthy weight. Regular exercise is very important. Engage in regular physical activity to support weight management and overall cardiovascular health. Also, exercise regularly, which we are like in my previous video. Aim at uh, 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic activity per week. Strength training strength training is also very important where we incorporate uh, strength training exercises at least two days per week. Eat health diet is also another preventive measure. Fruits and vegetables are very friendly. We talk about whole grain, lean proteins and low, uh, low fat uh, daily products to you, you check. Also limit saturated fat and trans fats Reduce intake of foods high in saturated fats, cholesterol, and trans fats. Manage stress is also very important where relaxation techniques such as yoga, meditation, deep breathing, or OBs that promote relaxation are encouraged. Get regular checkups with your healthcare provider because sometimes you may be thinking you are okay, but uh, something may be cropping up. With your healthcare visits, schedule your regular checkups with your healthcare provider to monitor your overall health, blood pressure cholesterol levels and diabetes management screening tests where we follow up recommended screening guidelines on cardiovascular health including blood tests imaging studies as uh, needed know the warning signs guys act fast learn <coughs> uh, to recognize the signs of stroke like uh, i talked about face we talk about face drooping 
arm weakness, speech, uh, speech difficulty, time to call emergency immediately for if the, you have this kind of uh, uh, signs and symptoms. So act quickly, call the emergency if you are at home searching. And also very important if you are at home searching, follow up medical advice. So medication, medical compliance is very important. Check your medications as, pre as prescribed so that you may, and making healthy lifestyle choices, you can significantly reduce your risk of stroke and improve the overall cardiovascular health. Always consult with your healthcare provider or professional for personalized and guidance based on your individual health uh, needs. So guys, by incorporating these strategies and also uh, into your daily life, you can significantly reduce your risk of stroke and promote overall, <coughs> overall cardiovascular health. Always consult with the healthcare provider or professional for personalized guidance and support based on your individual health needs. Guys, welcome. The channel is Nazvin. My name is Vincent. This is where we get to talk matters medical in a simple language without using a lot of medical jargon. By liking the video, you let YouTube to recommend us to a larger population so that uh, such complicated information as this, put in the simple language like this, gets to reach a larger population. Guys, welcome for our next video. We love you very much and peace.